Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. Are you one of those individuals who just found out your sister cannot have the Christmas dinner at her house? You have to do it and you don't have anything to decorate your table with and you're a little nervous. You need a project that's really quick for your table. So this is a very beautiful table runner. Now you don't have to make it out of Christmas fabric. You can make it for any season, but this table runner is so fast to make. Probably most of you can get it done in 20 to 30 minutes. Let me show you one more. Here's another one that's really easy to make. Now this could probably take you an hour, but it's very basic the way you put it together. So you have your fabric on top and then there's fabric on the bottom and you wrap it around to the top to cover your raw edges. So you don't need to worry about binding on here. This one is very basic. They're both very easy. So let's get started. When you purchase your fabric off of the bolt in a fabric store, your quilting fabric and most of your other fabrics are anywhere from 42 inches maybe up to 45 inches and if you're picking a really high-end fabric could be 50 or 60 inches. I use quilting fabric which is roughly 42 to 44 inches wide. So when you unfold this fabric from selvage edge to selvage edge it's 42 inches to 44 inches. Leave your fabric folded and line up your selvage edges down here. Cut this edge straight and from this edge, you're going to go over and cut the width that you want it. So let's say you want a 15 inch wide table runner at a half inch for seam allowance. So you'd go over 15 and a half inches. If you want just one short table runner, this will make about a 41 inch table runner, this fabric here. But if you want a long one, then move your ruler over another 15 and a half inches and do your cut. Now leave your fabric folded with the selvage edges together and if you're making a really long one stack those two sections that you cut on top of each other. Place your ruler down here and cut the selvage edges off. If you want to make the longer table runner then take those two sections that you cut, unfold them and bring the front sides together and pin this edge and then stitch a half inch seam right here. Then from this stitched edge go out how far you want the table runner to be. So let's say you want a 60 inch long table runner. Divide that in half, that's 30 inches. So because you want your seam to be in the middle of the table runner. So go out 30 inches plus a half inch seam allowance and do your cut. You can cut your table runner any length you want and any width. Just measure your table and decide how much space you want that table runner to take up. I've made table runners from 10 inches up to 18 inches. So you can make it any size you want. If you have a really tiny table, you probably want to scale it down. So how much fabric you're going to need is up to you depending on the size of the table runner. You're going to need anywhere from a half a yard to a, a yard of fabric for the top and then the same amount for fabric on the bottom. I'm also using a lightweight interfacing on this and it's a fusible interfacing. It gives it just a little body. I've cut my table runner a little narrow. It's 12 inches wide by about 41 inches long. So it's for a smaller table. You can also make these for your console tables of any type, a narrow little hallway table. So here's my fabric for the front and here's my fabric for the back of the table runner. It's also got Christmas fabric on it. So it's actually a two-sided table runner. So you could put one season on one side and another season on the other. I'm using fusible 
interfacing, lightweight fusible interfacing, and I got it at Walmart. You can also buy it at Joann's. You can even buy it off of the internet. And so I've put it on the back side, the not so pretty side of my fabric for the top. So you cut your fusible interfacing the same size as your fabric for the top. And then to fuse it on, the instructions are very clear on the package, but I'll go over it really quickly. You're going to want to put a damp cloth on it. And I usually keep a spray bottle at my ironing table, and I just spray it down. I get it very damp. And then you take a hot iron with steam. Now, this iron is not connected to any power. It's just for demonstration. You never want to iron on your cutting mat, so you need to do it at an ironing board. So you're going to set your iron down with steam, give it a burst of steam, hold it there for 10 to 15 seconds, lift, move, and you repeat that step all over. So after putting your interfacing on, you've got it fused on, let it sit for a minute or two to cool. Then you're going to take your two fabrics, bring pretty sides together, and line up your edges. Now pin your edges on all four sides, and then you're going to indicate a space that's large enough for your hand to get through. And so I've put one pin on one side of my opening, because this is where I'm going to start. But where I want to stop stitching, I'll put two pins. Then you're going to stitch a one quarter inch wide seam. So you're going to go from this one pin all the way down to your first corner. Then you're going to leave your needle down through the fabric when you get to one quarter inch away. And then you're going to lift your presser foot turn your fabric and continue stitching and you're going to leave that needle down in all four corners. When you get to the end you've come around almost to where you started. Remember stop at the two pins. You're always going to back stitch on each side of your opening. Now you need to trim some fabric off the corners and it's important that, the, that you do this because when you turn it front side out, if you haven't clipped this off, it's going to be really bulky. It's not going to look very nice. So I will usually trim mine down to about one eighth of an inch wide. I'll even take a little bit off on the other sides. And again, you do this on all your corners. Now here's the opening. Before I turn it front side out, what I like to do is to fold those opening edges back a quarter of an inch and just finger press it. It's going to make it easier for a, a step that's coming up pretty soon. Then you do that on both sides. Then reach inside and turn it front side out. Now here's the finished one. So I'm going to explain the finishing step which is really easy. Before you finish it all off, you want to go to your ironing board and press everything really flat. Then go back to your opening. This is where mine was on the finished table runner here. Make sure those edges are folded inside a quarter of an inch. Pin it closed. And then you're going to stitch real close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, around all four sides. And then you're done. Now to make the one where the fabric is folded from the back over to the front side. It's really easy. You want to cut your top fabric, that's this one here, and your fusible interfacing. You want to cut it the length you would like it to be finished at, whether it's 30 inches, 50 inches, 82 inches, whatever you want it to be. Then you cut your fabric for the back four inches wider and four inches longer than what this is. Then take your fabric for the back and all you're going to do is go to your ironing board and fold your edges over a quarter of an inch on all four sides. So now make sure that you fused your interfacing on the back of your top fabric, the same step you did on the other one. Now center this piece inside of your fabric for the back so you have equal amounts on all four sides. So just take a little 
ruler and lay it there to see if it's about the same position for all four sides. Now take this and you're going to fold it right at the edge of your top fabric. And so I'm folding it over and I can feel that fabric down there. And then you're going to begin to pin it down. So place some pins. You want to place your pins all the way down. I know a lot of people don't like to pin, but I like to know where my fabric is. And so I want to make sure it stays in the right place. So you continue pinning all the way down to the other end. Then you're going to stitch close to the edge right here next to this folded edge and you're going to start where this fabric ends. So stitch all the way down to the other corner and then as you're stitching down to the other corner you're going to stop stitching where it's even with the fabric on top. Once you've completed one edge and I'm starting with the two longest edges then you want to go over to the other side fold it over, pin it, and stitch it down. Before you stitch the other two ends, the shorter edges down, you want to do one more step. You're going to cut with your scissors the top fabric even with this. So you're going to cut right along, take your time, and you're going to stop about a quarter of an inch from the folded edge. Then you're going to go out to this side, come in about a quarter of an inch, and then finish cutting it. So you're cutting kind of like a little square out of your fabric. Let me get this other little piece. So when you're done, it looks like this. So you want to do this at all four corners. And then just finger press this edge down. Now you're going to take this corner right here and bring it even with this edge, the top fabric. Bring it over and finger press right there. So right now it looks like that. Now take it and just fold it over to where this corner is touching the edge of this fabric right there and then go ahead and pin it down. So you do that on all four corners. When you're done, you're going to stitch along this edge across over to the other side. And you do that at both ends. So this is what the corners look like when you're done. It's all nice and flat and also give it a good pressing when you're done so that these edges are nicer, nice and flat. One thing I like about this table runner, if you don't want to always see this side, you still have another side on the back. It's just one fabric, but it's also very festive. So you want, may want to have two different Christmas table, table runners all in one. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something new. Don't forget, you can make these for any season of the year. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. I have something for probably almost every day. I love making table runners and I'm always changing them around. Now, if you want to look at other table runner patterns, I have a lot of them. So you can use any of those for Christmas or any other time of the year. So those tutorials will be listed down below your YouTube screen in the description section. You just click on the words show more or the down arrow and it will expand open and you will see all kinds of links that you can click on. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy sewing! If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl. This is Manny. See you next time.